What's up, people? I'm Shaggy, the Opinionated Hippie, and this is part 69F of my ranking and reviewing Frank Zappa's guitar solos within the context of the album, this album, this time being Halloween 77. Uh, there were six shows in this. Uh, I don't want to call it a box set because it's not a box. It's a it's a, a USB port set. Um, six Halloween shows from 77. We are now on the big one, a.k.a. Halloween. Um, so, yeah, all six shows are on this little thing here. Um, how to make your own CDs. Put them on your iPod if you still use an iPod or whatever. Uh, yeah, so on the Halloween show. Um, over the course of these six shows, there were six solos that were played at every single show. Uh, one song had, was only in five of the shows. Uh, for the sixth show, Stinkfoot was played. It is not in this Halloween show. Uh, so this has six of the regular songs. It has the one that was only in five of the six shows. And then it's got a bonus song that only the Halloween show has. So yeah, I'm going to rank them from, there's eight of them, uh, from eight to one. And then I will show you where Halloween 77 follow, falls amongst all the others. So anyway, here we go. Halloween 77, eight solos. Number eight. I'll put the list up on the screen when I'm done. Uh, but anyways, number eight is Leather, Lather. Uh, nice, jazzy, uh, focused. It's really short, like a minute long. Uh, it's just this nice, brief, little, kind of jazzy, airy, light, casual little solo. Um, this one is pretty, is pretty good. Um, it's uh, really chill and laid back, but a couple of these Leather solos seem like there's some there's like three or four different like changes that happen over the course of the one minute. And it seems like every time Frank hits a change, he like drops a new idea or he's kind of just doing something different for like the next 12 seconds or whatever it is. This one seems to be one long continuous idea from start to finish, uh, which I think is is good. So, yeah. All right. Um, that's number eight. Uh, number seven is Punky's Whips. Um, this is the Baby Snakes solo. Uh, this is a fantastic solo. Uh, Terry Bozio is absolutely ridiculous on this. Um, yeah, this is this is really good. It's what you want out of a Punky's Whip solo. Is it the best Punky's Whips of the entire run? No, maybe not. Um, I'll, I'll, that decision will come later. Uh, but it's a good solo. Like, it's seventh because the rest of the solos are also very, very good. Uh, this was a good show. Um, but yeah, number seven would be Punky's Whips. Uh, number six is uh, Muffin Man. Uh, another really, really good solo. Um, is this the best of the Muffin Man solos? Mm, it's up there with the Baby Snakes one, which was from the previous show. Uh, it's pretty good. Um, Frank has some absolutely like very playful. A lot of times he's just kind of repeating the same idea over and over, which is awesome because then O'Hearn and Bozio respond to that and then Frank takes off and leaves them behind. But it's, I don't know, it's it's playful. It's what you want out of a Muffin Man solo. Both the Muffin Man and the Punky's Whips have that set ending energy. Like we're going to end really big and this is going to be fantastic and leave it all out on the floor and sweat and all that kind of stuff. Um, really good Muffin Man solo. What you want out of a Muffin Man solo. Uh, number five. And this is the lowest this song has fallen on any other show. Um, and that is the Conehead solo. Um, the first two times, the first two shows of this run, the Conehead solo, Conehead solo is ridiculous. By the time we get here, it's a lot chiller and a lot more... Like, Frank doesn't really find an idea in this Conehead solo to, like, rally around. And, like, it seems like the entire time he's just kind of exploring and just kind of, like, kind of all over the place. And it's, like, just five minutes of just kind of free-form Frank. Um, there's some great playing in it. O'Hearn, in particular, is ridiculous. Uh, Patrick's, in almost all of these solos, Patrick has, like, stepped up his game in a huge way. Uh, Bozio, of course, is always fantastic, but T Patrick seems to be really doing a lot more than normal and kind of forcing the issue to like inspire Frank to do stuff. Um, this one is weird because it really, it's not a very long solo and it's about the first like two and a half, three minutes before Frank actually really starts with something that feels like a cohesive solo. Prior to that, it really is just a lot of like, a lot of him just kind of tinkering around all over the place. He gets some nasty guitar tones in there about a minute and a half in, but that doesn't really like, 
it almost feels like there's a guitar issue going on. Like maybe there's something wrong with this guitar. Like it just, it takes a while. Like maybe he's having issues. Um, he's got some really nice, uh, I don't know. There's this, this nice moment sort of towards the middle of the solo where he's like going up the fretboard and it's like these dut, dut, like this really almost staccato type run that he goes on that kind of inspires a nice little moment. Um, but really, if it wasn't for O'Hearn providing these really interesting just random bass licks and bass runs out of nowhere, this is a pretty static solo. And the early Conehead solos in this run are just like, just like almost like, uh, what's what's his name? The uh, the painter who throws all the paint at the stuff and they made a movie with Ed Harris. What's that guy's name? Uh, Pollock, Jackson Pollock. It almost seems like these early Conehead are like Zappa's version of a Jackson Pollock painting. It's like just crazy chaos all over the place and all these crazy ideas and Frank's just like throwing licks all over the place. Um, this one's a lot more, imp it's impressionistic, but it's a lot calmer. It's not as chaotic. Uh, but yeah, that'd be number five, Conehead. Uh, number six, City of Tiny Lights. This one is awesome. Uh, Frank comes screaming in once the vamp gets established. This is your like typical like hardcore, really aggressive, really long, really high adrenaline. O'Hearn is going off like crazy. Um, this is a full on assault of a city of tiny lights. Um, this is the era of the death vamp where it's just that duh, nah, nah, type vamp. And Frank is using every, he is capitalizing on that energy this has an aggression to it it's as hard hitting it, it's just a ferocious version of frank um the segue is not too good they kind of mess up the segue back into the song um uh they they don't nail the segue on this one um yeah they do nail the segue oh actually they do it's the next one they don't nail the segue right yeah um Frank was having problems with them like nailing the segues back into the song on a couple of these solos. Uh, this one, they actually nail the segue. I wrote that, nail the segue. Had to make that note because they haven't been doing that. When they go back into the dear, near, 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 they get it right this time. They won't get it right on one of the solos that's further on up this list. Uh, but that's four, City of Tiny Lights. A uh, three, dropping down to three is Wild Love. Um, it's a good wild love, but we got two more that are, are just better. Um, O'Hearn, mad props to O'Hearn. Um, we get a little bit of the squirm in there, but uh, it's a pretty mild squirm. And almost immediately when they start the squirm, O'Hearn is just doing really weird, funky things and really aggressive and really coming out pretty uh, strong. And then there's a moment where O'Hearn steps back and it's just... Uh, Bozio and Zappa for a while and it's just Bozio just kind of going crazy and Frank doing this order lighter squirmier stuff and it's like Bozio's down here pounding away and Frank's up here just kind of squirming away um, and that's a nice contrast between Bozio's just acoustic drum heaviness and Frank's squirmy airiness um, we get some like yo mama scaffolding to come in there that da, 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 when we're building up that energy to kind of plateau and build up. It doesn't ever get to that like sort of yo mama hugeness, but you can see how this would eventually develop into that spot. Uh, you, you get a little bit of that. Um, <clears throat> O'Hearn oh, has this like really uh, <clears throat> starts playing these really almost proggy kind of 80s King Crimson circular bass lines at one point that are pretty cool. Like... I have more notes about O'Hearn here than I do about Frank's playing. Like Patrick is absolutely killing it in this one. Um, uh, and the solo itself is, is kind of reminds me of the Conehead solo from this show where like Frank's hitting all the right notes. It's got squirm energy, but it's just, it, it never reaches that point where it becomes like better than another Wild Love from this run. And so it's a, but it's a great solo. It's still fun. It's still exploratory. O'Hearn is fantastic. But they go back into the final theme. And then for the last three minutes, Frank just starts soloing again. We get a minute and a half of him like soloing, like by himself, like just going off, going off, going off. Like nobody else is even playing. He's just shredding. And that goes for about a minute and a half. And then after like a minute and a half in, O'Hearn and Bozio come in with this like, duh, 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 duh. and all of a sudden you get this extra three minutes of some of what is the best playing ever. Like 
I, I'm ranking. I'm going to have another video in which I rank all the Wild Loves, all the Coneheads, all those things. Um, this one was a little further down in the overall rankings until that final three minutes. I was almost considering cons uh, qualifying it or categorizing it as a second solo because it is. It's a second solo. You get the main solo. We return to the theme and then we get this sort of extra Jones crusher trying to grow a chin, just, you know, shredding at the end. And it goes on for three minutes. It's a full standalone solo. But for the sake of the wild love, I, I included it in, in the song proper. And it's great. It's <clears throat> it's an exhilarating ending. And, and the ending itself might be better than the actual wild love solo proper, especially when you compare it to other wild loves from this run. Uh, number two, and I would say this is the probably the best version of this thus far in the run, is The Torture Never Stops. Frank just slides right into the solo once the solo starts. Immediately, O'Hearn starts doing some weird stuff. So many O'Hearn notes in this. Uh, the Bozio O'Hearn thing is all over the place. Um, a lot of these tortures have two things going for them in 77 and 78. One, in 77, they have this airy or first half that kind of Frank will like hit a pedal or, you know, start to get a little nastier midway through and you can feel this like downshift into like this much more aggressive sort of like attack. Um, and then usually these have this really steady build where it's just like Chinese water torture. The intensity of the rhythm section just kind of increases. Um, this one kind of, one kind of gets rid of both of those things. O'Hearn and Bozier are kind of all over the place from the beginning, especially O'Hearn. And there's no real switch. It's just like the intensity just gradually gets more and more intense as the song goes on. A lot of nice, really little playful pockets, like little sort of jams within jams. Um, it doesn't feel like it does have like one cohesive narrative, like run like like the Rat Tamago one does or the torture from like uh, stage one or even earlier tortures from this run. But everything about this torture is confident and cocky. The band sounds fantastic. Uh, O'Hearn and Bozio fa sound fantastic. It's just from start to finish, just an awesome, awesome, awesome solo. Uh, they do kind of mess up the segue back into the dun 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 at the end. You're like, oh, we're back in it. Solo just kind of ends at the end. Um, but it's still a really, really fun, interesting ride. And number one, the only performance of this song in the entire run, and it was the very last thing they did, and you can see a somewhat slightly shortened and edited version of this on the Baby Snakes video, and that is Black Napkins. Uh, just, just a perfect solo. Um, it's got everything. Frank comes out and does his black napkins attack. He kind of slows it down in the middle. He's O'Hearn and Bozier are there. Frank's just, he's going hard the entire time, the entire song. It's the only black napkins from the run. It is, it is a perfect, perfect solo. And I've said this many a time. If Frank were, if somebody, ZFT, were to release a box set of nothing but black napkin solos, I would listen to it and buy it and love it. Um, but yeah, easily my number one is that Black Napkin solo. Absolutely, absolutely love it. Um, it's just, and it ends. It's the last solo. Frank's leaving it all out there. It's the last thing he would play in this Halloween run. It's beautiful. All right, that's what they look like in writing right there. Um, I'm going to make one more video in which I rank the solos, compare the solos to themselves and it's what? It's a lot of them. It's over 40 of them. So that'll be a separate video. So this one doesn't have to run on too long. And where would I rank this show if I had to compare it or this release? If I had to compare this release to all others, I have it at number five. Um, I have it behind Halloween 81. I think solo per solo, the Halloween 81s are just a little, a little better, a little more consistently weird and out there and surprising um and this one i have to put it to five just because the the repetition and the muffin mans and the punky whips you know and the leathers as great as they are they are treading over the same ground a lot of the time it's great ground to tread over but there is a lot of repetition there so i have it at number five which seems good for me i don't know i, I don't know yeah but anyways all the red ones are releases when he was alive. All the black ones are releases after he passed away. So anyways, yeah, that's it. That's what I got for this. 
Thanks for watching. Done with Halloween 77, except for the final rankings of the songs, which will drop in a couple days. But uh, yeah, let me know your comments on these solos, on Frank Zappa, on Halloween, on Scary Things, on Black Napkins. What a great song. All right, that's all I got. Thanks for watching. Peace. Talk to you later.